Good morning, everybody. You'll see that the gospel acclamation has changed because we're in Lent, so we're not allowed to say that word that begins with an A. But it should always be sung. If we don't sing it, we're not meant to do it. So the one that's here goes like this. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Very easy, Sarah. Can we try and sing it? Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Then we say the affirmation and then sing that again at the end. A couple of other things that are different about this morning's Mass. While ashes are being administered, you'll see there are some antiphons to be said, three antiphons and a responsory. So if we can say those, while the ashes are being administered. I shouldn't think we would need to, but if we do, then we, when we've gone through them all, go back to the beginning again, let us change our garments. And in the third one, the, in place of the usual bidding prayers, there's a litany this morning, so I shall leave that not, not the reader. Thank you. Because we have the great right of receiving ashes in the middle of today's service, there is no penitential right here at the beginning. And so let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your father who sees all that is done in secret. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the nursery rhyme? Little Polly Flinders sat among the cinders, warming her pretty little toes. Her mother came and caught her and whipped her little daughter for spoiling her nice new clothes. I didn't choose that because it mentions ash and cinders uh, for today, but it's a nursery rhyme that I think children today could identify with, especially with Polly Flinders' bewilderment as her mother appears from nowhere and took action which in today's society will be strongly disapproved of and will probably bring the mother before the Human Court of Rights. But mothers have long been said to have eyes in the backs of their heads. They're adept at spotting their children about to get up to mischief. And the trouble is many people think of God in very much the same way as a sort of stern Victorian schoolmaster with a cane in his hand and eyes everywhere waiting to pounce on unsuspecting sinners the moment they contemplate some sort of mischief. But in today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is very clear. He deliberately says, your father who sees in secret will reward you. He doesn't say, your father who sees in secret will punish you. God is always looking for the best in us, to encourage us, to help us along the way. Just as Jesus always looked for the best in people, like Zacchaeus, that tax collector who climbed a tree to see him and then offered to repay any people that he defrauded. Or perhaps even more clearly, in the story of the woman who was caught in adultery, there's no mention of punishment for her sin, just an instruction to sin no more. It's clear from the Gospels that Jesus had a soft spot for sinners. But whilst Jesus was true and had a real and deep love for those who were aware of their sins, he reserved his harshest words not for sinners, but for hypocrites. In Jesus' day, those who were hypocrites were mostly to be found amongst the religious authorities. They put on an outward show of religion, but the love of God had not reached their hearts. But God cuts through all outward show, says Jesus in today's reading, and sees what's in the innermost parts of our being. God's not looking to catch us out deliberately, but if we claim to love God, but then the things we do don't show it, but really our outward show is all misery and nastiness, then Jesus says God can't fail to see what sort of people we are by the way we behave, because he sees the innermost parts of our being. God isn't looking to catch us out, but he will notice if we don't do what he says. And I hope this includes most of us, if we're aware of this, then we find ourselves saying that prayer, God, forgive my sin and help my unlove. It's little quiet acts of kindness and gently spoken words, which are most unremarkable to us and to other people probably, but they're seen and they're heard by God. As the Holy Spirit, the presence of God within us develops and grows, so such little acts and quiet wails become more frequent and more habitual. We don't need to make a great show of God before God because he knows what's in our hearts. He knows of what we're made. But sin militates 
against that kind of inner closeness to God and this growth in our inner being. Sin is a kind of unpleasant <coughs> stickiness which drags at us, prevents us from reaching our true potential as human beings. Someone must describe sin as walking through treacle because we're so powerless to escape its clutches. Merely by being human, we all have to walk in the treacle of sin. And sin is full of nasty little secrets which we all keep hidden, often from ourselves, let alone from other people. So there are dark places within each of us which are shut away from the presence of God and where we don't allow his light to penetrate. But Jesus explored all this darkness on the cross. He faced all its worst secrets expressed through the physical agony of the cross. And Jesus emerged unscathed from that terrible cross into a glorious, light-filled resurrection. And thus he conquered sin for all of us, so that we too might experience freedom from sin and might experience the glorious new life which his resurrection brings. But to take advantage of this act of Jesus on the cross, we do need to acknowledge that we are indeed sinners and to open ourselves to the grace that God wants to give us. And the more we're able to open ourselves, the more God's light will penetrate the depths of our being and the more we'll experience that freedom from the stickiness of sin that Jesus achieved for us. So, Penance is a fundamental aspect of this holy season of Lent. Today, we acknowledge our need for forgiveness very publicly by receiving ashes on our foreheads. All of us, perhaps especially the priests, know that we have fallen short of God's standards and we declare our intention of using Lent to bring about a change in our lives, a turning to God, a turning away from sin, a rejection of all that's even in our lives. And if we're being serious about this reconciliation with God, then it really ought to include sacramental confession and an absolution at some point. That will be available, of course, both our churches, at both our daytime and our evening special services during this Lenten time. And as well as reconciliation with God, we also have to be reconciled to our brothers and sisters in the church. How can we hope to celebrate the full joy of Easter if we're not at peace with God and our fellow men and women? We are human beings. And we often find that we're unable to let go of our sin all at once. There's no miraculous change in our lives. And so we need to return to that sacrament of reconciliation on a regular basis to make sure that we have some spiritual direction tied in with it too. But as we gradually allow the light of God to penetrate deeper and deeper into the inner recesses of our being, with the continued aid of the sacraments, so sin gradually loses its hold over us and we find ourselves stepping confidently forward into God's amazing light. Those words of Jesus are so very true. Our Father does see what is in secret and he will reward us. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penance. A God who will move by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked 
with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. change our garments, sackcloth of the ashes, and fast and weep before the Lord, that our God, rich in mercy, might give us our sins. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, stand in the porch of the Lord, and weep and cry out, Therefore, Lord, there be Lord. Do not close the mouths of those who sing in the words of the Lord. What are the transgressions of the Lord? which we have committed in the Let us pray to the Father. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all the nations. Enlighten your ministers with knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into ways of peace and justice. Hear us, Lord. Guard and strengthen your servant, Elizabeth, our Queen, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Hear us, Lord. And you, the High Court of Parliament, and all the ministers of the Crown, with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, Lord. Bless those who administer the law that they may uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Hear us, Lord. Teach us to use the fruits of the earth to your glory, for the good of all. Hear us, Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, Lord. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Lord, Lord have mercy. 
Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Lord, Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Lord, Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts. Lord, Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone, and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, Father, you hear the prayers of those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed Lord, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual prince. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Today we are going to be using the Eucharistic Prayer for Reconciliation, um, which I've not said it before, but it seems appropriate for today and has been recommended. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts, by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfil when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, 
As he reclined at supper, he let himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the same evening, he took a chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free, celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son. So also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of <laughs> Lamb of oh God, will you take away the sins of the world? Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the suffer of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you, and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that our Lenten programme kicks in on Friday, so there is no Mass here Friday morning, but there is Stations of the Cross at half past six on Friday evening. Then on Sunday, it's the first Sunday in the month, which means we will be making our donations to the food bank. The other Lenten things all begin next Wednesday. Uh, Mass here at 10.30, then a Lent study, and then a Lent lunch. So that say, begins next Wednesday, not today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. By your heads for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
in Helston about whether we have the hymn first or the hymn after and things like that. And it got so complicated. I decided it's easier to put it on the Sunday sheet for people to say themselves. 